So yeah, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you shouldn't, but you can do that at Joshua Jenkins Yo. It is completely horrific and unrelated to the stuff I'll be talking about. Um, but yeah, I'm a product designer at Dropbox. I work primarily on our platform and sharing teams. Um, you don't care. Um, I'm here to talk to you about rethinking workflow, subtitle, how designers can work better with developers. It's a very large sounding thing. So it, you can just think of it as developing with designers. Better title because it's a double entendre. We're going to develop as people together. And also, you are developers, potentially. So that's the first of many terrible jokes. Hope, hope you're stoked. Um, so um, with this kind of talk, there's like a big opportunity to um, for me to like make a bunch of assumptions about like what you know or what you do or how your process works. I'm going to do my best not to do that, um, but it might happen. So just calling that out. So let's start with some assumptions. Um, let's do definitions of like what a designer and a developer is for the sake of this like conversation. So developer, please don't shoot me, um, is a human probably that designs, implements, and tests the inner workings of a thing. Um, I think that's pretty non-controversial. Um, <laughs> So one thing I want to flag is that most product developers are a little bit designer. I'm going to talk more about that. Um, but to start off, here is a, a slide that demonstrates that. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see the bottom of this thing. And I'm regretting a lot of the design decisions in this presentation currently, because there's a lot of stuff that happens at the bottom. So um, I will verbalize that nervously and awkwardly throughout the conversation. So most product developers are a little bit designer. Uh, designer um, is a human, probably that crafts experiences for other humans, probably. Um, I'm a designer. I don't know. It's cool, I guess. That's maybe how I would self-identify. Um, but the thing to flag is like design is not just about like how things look, but how things work. And that's the perspective that like designers come from. Um, and not all uh, product designers are a little bit developer, is the kind of like opposite thing from the other one. Um, more and more you're seeing like more overlap in like the whole maker thing and like there's a million like conversations and posts and things about that. I'm not going to dwell on that, but it's worth keeping in mind that um, it's not necessarily like a two-way street in like general, like there's, there's overlaps, lack of overlaps that I will talk more about without doing this. Um, so a little bit of context in addition to the context I've already provided. Um, so I've been a designer at Dropbox for two years. Um, I was the second person on the team and we're now at like 15. And when I started, it was like very much an engineering driven, driven culture, as already mentioned. Um, and we're like shifting more to like a um, egalitarian kind of like culture, um, which I'll touch on in a minute. And here is kind of like a slide for what um, like the growth of like a company like Dropbox kind of looks like. Um, this is unlabeled for two reasons. One is to like annoy the pedantic people in the room. And the other one is to, it, it's just a rough sketch. It's just to kind of illustrate the point. So like, as you can see, like earlier on, things kind of look roughly the same. And then at a certain point, things just kind of go insane. Um, and we're currently in like insanity land. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about like what it's like going from like non-insanity land to insanity land. Um, did not rehearse that ridiculous way to describe this. Um, so yeah, Dropbox stage. Um, just like what is it like when like processes start to harden? Um, and like how can you be like um, a person that um, is like a positive helper in that situation? So. That is like a 45 minute preamble to the actual talk. So I'm going to start with talking about um, building a Dropbox. Um, this is a kind of a generalized high level sketch of what it's like to like build a product at Dropbox. And I'm going to kind of blow through it. So um, to start off, like there's step zero, step zero engineers. Look at that. It's a zero, not one. Um, we agree that we're going to make something, right? So good place to start. And then we kind of like start to have like a Brainstorming sessions and like a high level sketch of what, what we're going to make and like design, engineering, and PM is like kind of in the room and we start to figure out what that thing is going to be. Um, see if this thing animates. Animate. So, this is one of the things that you're not going to be able to see at all. Um, so, don't ever try to hire me to design slides because apparently that's not something I can do. But I'm going to kind of like walk through this like activity level thing to kind of show like how design and engineering um, kind of like go up and down throughout the process. Um, and then reflect on that deeply and like very interestingly at the end. Um, step one, we're going to make something. And there's some asides in this thing. And the first one is egalitarianism. Um, this is something I touched on a minute ago. So a Dropbox um, is a very egalitarianistic kind of um, the way that we build things together. But egalitarianism is this like really big, complicated word. So I wanted to break it down um, with some flames. And the root word of egalitarianism is eagle. And <laughs> what that means is that everyone has the freedom 
to kind of like propose ideas and like everyone gets in a room and like works together to, to, to just like work together. I don't know, that's an eagle. Um, that's, that's another joke. Um, so um, step two, you start to explore possible solutions and like step three is like design starts to explore the situation. Um, this is the first part where, as you can see on the scientific graph, um, design's kind of like doing, um, it's like engage, design is engaged more than like engineering. And this is kind of like the beginning of where things can maybe start to like um, get tough in like a communication um, perspective. But at this point, like design is just um, going through like a ton of iterations and exploring this thing. And then you start to get into like design reviews. And I'm not going to dwell on like what that process looks like at Dropbox, but um, for the sake of this argument, this is like reviewing with engineers, PMs, and um, like actual formal design reviews. But it's important to note that like engineering is involved with the design reviews, um, part of this egalitarianism thing I was talking about. Um, so um, after we like agree on what it is, we start building the thing in earnest, and that's where like design and engineering start to be in kind of like lockstep again in terms of engagement. It's a very highly collaborative place. Um, design's gonna be like handing over like specs and mocks and things like that. And engineering starting to build them, but there's probably still a little bit of design work left to do. Oh shit, <laughs> sorry. Um, good time to over communicate or overreact to a slide going too fast. Um, so, so yeah, so you're at the point where like you're both starting to work together. Um, you're trying to hand off things. So um, this is a great time to start to like over communicate. Um, I'm gonna give you a story instead of just rambling. Um, so when we were building Chooser, which is this like Dropbox widget where you can get like things in and out of Dropbox on like different websites and stuff, um, the way I handed over the design was like I had these these mocks that I gave to um, the developer, and basically there's like this files tab and there's this photos tab, and the files tab lists out all these files. The photos tab has like a thumbnail thing of all the photos, and the developer goes and like implements it, comes back to me, shows it to me, and the thing has this like page refresh. Um, and it occurs to me that like I never really explained that like I was viewing this thing more as like an application. Um, where you have like a consistent uh, Chrome and then like the content area refreshes, right? Like it's this like minor thing where we're both coming from reasonable uh, expectations. You know, the developers building this stuff, like how the web stack works, designers explaining this thing, how like the user's gonna expect it to, expect it to work. Um, but there's just like a lack of communication there. Um, but we caught it early on, which is like way better. So um, I'm dwelling too much on this stuff. Design is finalized, whatever the hell that means. Um, and developers are like building it and then it gets into the, the stage where like, yeah, developers building designs like disengaging to some degree. Um, because in like a company like Dropbox and like other larger companies, there's just a ton of stuff happening. So like maybe this is the point where I get roped into like another project or something like that, but I'm still like playing assistant um, to this thing and like checking in. Um, so this is like one of the, the more important asides that I want to talk about, which is that um, developers spend like way more time with the product um, than designers at this point. And I think that's like a really interesting thing where design can like conceive as much as they want like what this thing is going to be, but developers are bringing it to life. They're bringing like whatever like whatever phony version of the thing the designer is making. Um, yeah, developers like bringing it to life, and um, it's a great time to like see what feels weird and is like broken, and they're going to notice that possibly more than design at that point. Um, so it's kind of like an opportunity and a responsibility for, de for developers to flag those things as like weird or not weird and um, like have conversations about it. So to put that like more concretely, um, there's, you can imagine a world where like, and I think this is kind of how stuff used to work in earlier like tech companies, but like um, design is just like handed to engineering and then engineering just like builds the thing 100% and then you ship the thing. And that's kind of like a great way to build shitty software. Um, but a better way to not build shitty software is just to have conversations and like everyone is like equally invested in shipping great stuff and like taking those things as an opportunity. So um, I think that's really important to keep in mind. Um, then you get into beta internal testing, which is a whole thing on its own. And then you ship it. So <laughs> that's a process that's <laughs> documented somewhere at a doc and we all follow it to the T and or I just kind of threw it on a slide. But the, the thing that I wanted to kind of show is like the, the thing you can't see, which is like the design, like the orange line at the top and engineering. Like I can't even read the thing I wrote like right here, like let alone you poor saps back there. So sorry about that. But the areas where there's like a big delta between like design and engineering engagement are the issue, like the areas where um, you have to be super vigilant to just like um, over communicate and like stay in lockstep. So um, I'm gonna share some Oh, shh, sh nothing. Um, so yeah, afterwards talk about what worked and what didn't work. Um, so this is, um, 
this is important. This is like one of the more like later stage things. I think that's like super important and like worth keeping in mind that um, your process and the way you build software um, is going to harden one way or another. So you can either have like an active like engagement where like you help like fix the process over time and like sand down rough edges, or you can just let it solidify and like whatever like suboptimal step it like starts in at the beginning. And over Dropbox, like over the course of working at Dropbox, I've like, definitely seen this happen where like we just like take this iterative approach to to solving like the software development process, and that's been super helpful. Um, tips, cool tools, um, other than me. Um, so there's. There's ways that designers can like hand things over to developers that can maybe smooth out some of this stuff. I don't want to dwell on this stuff too much, but um, there's specs. Um, specs are they're fine or whatever. One thing to keep in mind with like specs is that um, there's a huge opportunity to kind of just like do them wrong, which is um, the part of like the designer is not necessarily being developers thing. Like a designer might hand over a spec that measures literal pixels between like you know like the top of a line of text and like a thing up at the top. But um, like when you're implementing that thing, those measurements are useless, right? Like they don't mean anything. Um, you actually have to implement it based on the technology you're using. So if the designer doesn't necessarily understand that, like you have to set that expectation up front. So you know you feel that out yourself. Um, another one is Xscope. This is super popular with developers, where like a designer just like hands over something, and developers get to measure everything themselves and make their own spec. Um, <laughs> this has worked with like mixed results at Dropbox, um, but I mean it does kind of work. So something to keep in mind. Um, components, there's no picture here because we don't do this, but um, we would like to, which is just like, you know, a button looks like this, a form looks like this, and um, it just kind of, um, you just kind of stitch them together, and like, that's a good thing too. Um, and then the other thing is like prototypes. This is a cool prototype um, of <laughs> literally nothing. Um, so um, there's a ton of conversations about like prototypes too, and like the value of that. Um, I think it's a given that having a living, breathing version of something is better than not having that. And it's also um, cool and like designership front end code and stuff like that. And I have a hunch that other people are gonna talk about that. Um, but at Dropbox in specific, like it gets to the point where everyone just needs to do what's like most valuable. Um, they need to do the thing they're most, most goodest at um, <laughs> the whole time um, versus maybe like spending a bunch of time building a prototype, which is not the most effective use of their time. So. Those things are things, but the thing that really matters is um, communication, which clearly I am amazing at, and um, I uh, I think that like this is like the like the free like special seasoning that like you can sprinkle on at any point of the process. It's a metaphor, I guess, and um, I have some tips for like how to do that, I suppose. Um, oh yeah, so keeping in mind like design chiefly cares about the experience that the humans will have like as a developer. Um, I, like the, un the underlying thing here is that like you can't have um, you can't have like a strong working relationship without like an, an empathetic um, just kind of like understanding of the other party with designers like this is what it's all about right we're just trying to make like great stuff um, not that developers aren't but uh, the design's on the hook for like the actual way it works and feels so something to keep in mind um, I borrowed a story with um, I thought those were going to be way cooler by the way I'm really sorry that those aren't awesome looking um, <laughs> Um, the, I borrowed this story from another designer at Dropbox. So he actually, this is worth noting, that he actually built a prototype for this thing and there was still communication breakdown, which is why I think like the communication thing is super important. So there's like a list of items and like this orange-ish, brown, awful mustard colored thing at the bottom is like the thing you're looking at, right? And then like a new item enters the thing, um, but the one you're looking at doesn't move around. Um, that's like the spec. Like you can look at a thing and new things can come in and like it doesn't move, right? Pretty basic sounding. Um, so the way the designer, the designer kind of like explains that to the developer and the developers um, saying, well, no, like it has to move, um, you know, like that's not, it's not gonna work. And the designer's kind of pushing back, you know, it's like, oh, is this like a constraint? Like, like a technological constraint? Just like, no, just, just do it, please. Like the thing can't move around. Like what, what are you talking about? And they kind of like devolve into this like, I think ultimately a fist fight, and um, so it's <laughs> the thing. The thing that actually happened was like the the developer is thinking about this thing as like a scroll view with like an offset. So the thing has to move such that it doesn't look like it moves, and the designer is like talking about how it looks. That's an eyeball. Um, so like they're they're saying the same thing, but there's just like a mix, like a mismatch in communication because they don't have like a shared vocabulary, right? Um, and I think there's like one way to solve, well, 
probably infinity ways to solve this, but one that I'm going to talk about, um, which is a two-player game of telephone. Um, for you, those of you that don't know the game of telephone, it's this really stupid game where you like, you think of something, and then you say it to someone, you whisper it, and then that person hears it, whispers it, and like you start off with something, and then it ends up somewhere else. Um, you probably already all knew that. Um, Two-player game of telephone, fire, um, is um, basically like you you say like, hey, I don't want this thing to move. You say that to the person, and then they hear that, and then they repeat it back. Um, and that sounds like kind of basic and stupid, but the thing is, is like, you can fall into the trap of thinking you're communicating when you just say something to someone and they like heard the words you said. Like that might feel like it's communication. That's not communication um, because people like all process things and internalize things in different ways, right? Like you translate it into like a language you understand and then you like put it in your body or whatever, um, and that's different for like different people. So if you internalize and then externalize and just like go through this like back and forth thing, like you're more likely to get to the point where you're repeating the same thing back and forth. In, like forever, and that's ideal. But no, you just don't want the breakdown, right? Um, so that being said, like for all these like developer designer thing, designer like relationship things, there's no magic bullet. Obviously, um, there's a ton of different ways that like you can work to solve this through like processes or like technology or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that communication is this thing that you can just continually work on and focus on, and that's going to yield like way better results. Um, I think I already said work at it. That's supposed to happen when I say it. Um, and yeah, like you just got to work at it. And like I mentioned earlier, like this stuff pays dividends. It's not just like between you and the, and the person, but um, it informs the way like your entire company's culture grows and the way you build software. Um, and I think that is all the rambling I have for you today. So thanks. <laughs>